Funding for the following presentation is provided by a grant from UConn Extension and is a cooperative effort of UConn Extension and the Risk Management Agency Division of the USDA. My name is John Bove. I'm an assistant professor and extension economist in the Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics at the University of Connecticut. This is a webinar on risk management and basics of crop insurance. Funding for this webinar has been provided by a generous grant from Yukon Extension and is a cooperative effort of Yukon Extension and the Risk Management Agency of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. In this presentation, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the 2014 Farm Bill. Then I'm going to talk about USDA crop insurance in general and crop insurance programs that are available in Connecticut. The 2014 Farm Bill, as it's popularly called, or Farm Act, which appropriated funding for USDA from 2014 through the end of 2018, um, provides funding for nutrition assistance programs, conservation programs for farmers, commodity programs, and crop insurance. About 80% of the outlays under the 2014 Farm Bill were on SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, formerly known as Food Stamps, WIC, Women, Infants, and Children Program, the National School Lunch Program, the Food and Security Nutrition Incentives Program, and other nutrition assistance programs. About 6% of expenditures under the 2014 Farm Bill go for conservation programs, such as the CRP, EQIP, and ACEP. Under the 2014 Farm Bill, some of the main commodity programs were repealed, including direct payments, average crop revenue election, and counter-cyclical payments. But other commodity programs were created. The 2014 Farm Bill created two programs that are complementary to crop insurance. So they help farmers reduce their risks, um, but farmers do not have to pay for uh, risk management under these two programs. In order to qualify for these programs, farms must undertake conservation programs. They're eligible for the PLC, price loss coverage, uh, if, they, if they choose to enroll their crops in that program. And if, and if they enroll in that PLC program, farms will be, farmers will be paid if crop prices drop below a reference price. If they enroll in the ARC, the Agricultural Risk Coverage Program, on the other hand, they will be paid on the basis of revenue, protection against loss of price and yield. Only major commodities, such as wheat, corn, barley, oats, rice, soybeans, and a few others, are eligible for either of these two programs. And for each crop, farmers must opt into one of the two programs. Connecticut farmers don't make very much money from this program because they don't grow very many of these crops, or very many acres of these crops. In 2015, the last year for which data are available, the two programs paid about $410,000 to Connecticut farmers. Subsidized crop insurance is now the main mechanism for improving farm revenues under the 2014 Farm Bill. Crop insurance is subsidized by the government. It's costly for USDA because premiums for the crop insurance are subsidized by between 38 and 80 percent, depending on the level of coverage and the program. This subsidy is conditional on farmers undertaking certain environmental practices. And the specific policies available vary a lot by crop or livestock species and by county. USDA's Risk Management Agency, RMA, oversees the federal crop insurance program. 
RMA also manages the Federal Crop Insurance Corporation. This corporation approves all policies and modifications to policies and sets rates. And then approved insurance providers sell the insurance policies. Each provider sells identical policies. So shopping for policies is basically about personal relationships or perhaps about convenience. Most of our crop insurance programs in the U.S. reimburse farmers when either quantity produced decreases because of some natural event. This type of policy is known as yield protection, and it protects against certain natural events, such as droughts, flood, hot or cold weather, or disease. And so what you're insuring is the number of bushels per acre, but being paid out of the policy is conditional on some bad weather event happening. It's not about being paid for low yields when you're not farming well or when you're not applying enough irrigation water, not enough, applying enough fertilizer. It's about natural events that reduce your yield. The other type of policy protects when revenue is too low. This is called revenue protection harvest price exclusion. And what you're insuring here is revenue in dollar terms There are several other types of crop insurance available. So for Connecticut, for the 2019 crop year, which is about to begin, these are the types of insurance policies available. And I'll go through and describe for you which types of policies are available for which crops. The actual production history policy, which is a yield protection policy, the yield protection with supplemental coverage option, livestock gross margin program, nursery commodity insurance, rainfall index programs for a few different commodities, the whole farm revenue protection program, and dairy revenue protection. Actual production history policies are available for apples in all eight Connecticut counties, for grapes in three of the Connecticut counties, Litchfield, New London, and Wyndham, and for peaches in Litchfield and Middlesex counties. These policies are based on your farm's actual production history. They're a type of yield protection policy, meaning that they ensure when yields fall. And the payments are based on both yield shortfalls and the elected price, that is the price you choose to ensure your yield at. So the elected price is chosen by the producer and it covers 60 to 100 percent of the Federal Crop Insurance Corporation's projected price. As your coverage increases, the premium subsidy rate decreases. So you can choose a yield coverage level under the APH policy from between 50 and 75 percent and the premium subsidy rate will be between 67 and 55 percent. Now, to calculate APH yields, you have to have you you have to have four years of production and yield history. These must be consecutive years. And if you have missing records, or if your crop is new, then you have to use RMA's so-called transition years year transition yields to fill four years of data to ensure that you get four years of history, at least constructed artificial history. So here are some examples of transition yields for peaches and apples in our state, for non-organic fresh peaches in Middlesex County over the last five years. These transition yields have ranged from 105 bushels to 128 bushels per acre. For certified organic fresh peaches in Litchfield County, these yields have ranged from 68 to 109 bushels per acre. And for irrigated, fresh, non-organic apples in Fairfield County, the yields have ranged from 260 to 438 bushels per acre. And these yields depend in part on 
the type of apple grown. So for example, Honeycrisp and Fuji may have different assigned transition yields under the APH policy. Now I'm going to go through a couple of examples of how the payments would work. Let's say that you're a new peach orchard in Middlesex County and you're growing non-organic peaches and you have two years of yield data. In 2018, your yield was 119 bushes, bushels, and in 2017, you, your yield was 108 bushels. Then your transition yields in 2016 would be 128 bushels times a penalty of 90%, so 115 bushels. And in 2015, 116 bushels uh, times a penalty of 90%, so 104 bushels. Over the four years, accounting for the T yields and the penalties, your calculated APH would be 112 bushels. Now, how is the indemnity payment going to be figured? Let's say that the weather is really bad in spring and you, you lose your entire crop. You have a yield of zero bushels. And let's say that you've, you've insured your crop at 65%. So anytime the yield drops, below 65% or 73 bushels, you're going to get paid. And you're going to get paid for the difference between 65% or 73 bushels and your actual yield. So in this first example, with a yield of zero, your bushels per acre loss is going to be 73. And you're going to be paid out at the established price of $51.25 per bushel. So your indemnity per acre is going to be $3,741. Now, let's consider the same orchard, but with an actual yield of 60 bushels per acre instead of zero. Now, your, uh, your loss is going to be 13 bushels per acre. That is the guaranteed yield minus the actual yield. And you're going to be paid out at the same established price, so your indemnity per acre is going to be $666. APH covers losses when you, you, your loss is caused by adverse weather conditions, failure of irrigation water supply due to natural causes, fire due to natural cause, insect damage or plant disease, and for peaches, an insufficient chilling period. You can also get insurance payout if your crop is damaged due to wildlife. These dates uh, haven't been announced yet for the 2019 crop year, but they tend to be pretty similar from year to year. The sales closing date is November 20th. You have to report production by January 15th. You have to report acreage by January 15th also. And the premium would be billed next August 15th. Under the 2014 Farm Bill, there's a new program called the SCOYP, Supplemental Coverage Option Yield Protection. This is available for apples in all eight Connecticut counties. And it's an endorsement or a supplement to the yield protection or APH policy. Under the APH policy, you can insure 50 to 85% of APH yield. In addition to the APH policy, the SCO YP pays when the county yield drops below 86% of the APH yield. So you're paid for yield losses at established prices for apples when the county yield drops below 86%. You can get paid between about $5 and $38 per bushel, depending on the type of apple and the production practices used. And 65% of the premium is subsidized. The dates for uh, selling the policies and reporting and billing are the same as in the APH policy. So let's go over an example of how the SCOYP policy works. 
Let's say that you have an orchard in Hartford County with 10 acres of Honeycrisp apples. So currently the APH yield is 286 bushels per acre for Honeycrisp. Let's compare the outcomes from buying the APH policy and for adding the supplemental coverage option for yield protection. Let's say that you buy coverage at 75% of the APH yield and 100% of the FCIC price, $37.90 per bushel. So in example one, we're gonna say that your yield is 85% of normal. Because you have insured at 65%, you're not eligible for an indemnity payment under the APH policy. But under the SCOYP policy, if the county yield is lower than 86%, you will get paid out. Let's say the county yield is 80% 80, 80 of the APH yield of 286 bushels per acre. And then you'd get paid the difference between that 80% yield and 86% threshold. So 6% of the 286 bushel yield and paid out at 37.90. This is going to amount to $650 per acre. In example two, let's say your yield is 70% of normal at 200 bushels per acre. 200 bushels is 70% uh, of 286. Now, if you've bought 75% insurance coverage, then under the APH policy, your guaranteed bushels per acre equivalent is 75% of 286 or 215. And if you've elected 100% price coverage, you're going to get paid out at that full price, $37.90 per bushel, times the 15 bushels per acre loss, $569 per acre. In addition to this, if you've bought the SCO YP policy, and if the county yield is 80% of 286 bushels, you'll get an additional payment of $650 per acre in addition to that APH payment listed above, $569 per acre. The Livestock Gross Margin Program is available for dairy, cattle, and swine throughout Connecticut. The Livestock Gross Margin is the market value of the product, that is the animal, minus the feed costs. Payments are based on futures prices and not on the prices you receive. You can enroll for up to 10 months if you have dairy cattle or for up to five months if you have swine. And you can choose whether or not to enroll on the last Friday of each month or prior to the last Friday of each month. This doesn't depend on natural events. Instead, it depends on market conditions. There are, of course, some restrictions. For dairy, you can insure up to 240,000 hundred weight per crop year. You can't insure more than your actual monthly production. And the subsidy is only available if you cover at least so here's an example of how the Livestock Gross Margin pro Program's payments work. Let's say that on March 30th, a dairy producer insures 5,000 hundredweight based on Class 3 milk futures prices of $16 per hundredweight and expected feed costs based on futures prices of $9 per hundredweight. Then the gross margin guarantee is going to be $7 per hundredweight, 16 minus 9. If, at the end of May, it turns out that Class 3 milk futures prices are $14 per hundredweight and futures prices for the planned feed mix are $10 per hundredweight, then the actual gross margin is going to be $4 per hundredweight. And you're going to be eligible for an indemnity payment of $3 per hundredweight times that 5,000 hundredweight insured, or $15,000. Nursery commodity insurance is a little bit different. You're eligible for it if your operation makes at least 50% of your gross income from wholesale. And there are, of course, restrictions on 
how you can grow plants if they're going to be insured. Growing containers may not have more than two, more than one cultivar in them. Christmas trees may not be insured. You may not insure them if they're grown as stock plants or if they're grown for harvest of buds, flowers, or greenery. You're protected against loss from adverse weather conditions, failure of irrigation water supply, fire, or wildlife. You can elect to cover between 50 and 75% of your plant inventory value. Let's say that you cover 75% of a $100,000 plant inventory value, and you lose $40,000 worth of inventory, so you only have 60% of your inventory. Then your crop insurance indemnity payment will be the difference between that 75% coverage level and the 60% you have left. So 15% or $15,000. There's also something known as catastrophic coverage available for the nursery commodity insurance program. This coverage is fixed at 27.5% of plant inventory value, and it's available for a flat administrative fee of $300. If you elect to spend this $300 to buy the CAT coverage, you will lose, sorry, and if you lose 70% of your income inventory or um, you have 30% remaining, there won't be a payment. Well, let's say you lose 75% of that $100,000 inventory. Then you'll be eligible for a 2.5% indemnity payment, the difference between 27.5% of inventory and what you have left, 25%. So you get an indemnity payment of 2500 if you lose it all, you'll be eligible for a 27.5% indemnity payment, or $27,500. $27, you need to make an election to change the contract by January 31st. Sales close on May 1st, and the insurance period begins on June 1st. For pasture, rangeland, and forage, you can enroll in a pilot insurance program. It's available throughout the state. This program makes payments on the basis of rainfall in the grid where your farm acreage is located. My office is located right on that um, pin on the map, right on the border of two of the cells in the grid. For one of them, I'll show you what the rainfall grid looked like. So if the grid level rainfall in your grid is below an index level, you can elect 70 up to 90% of the index, between 70 and 90% of the index level. You'll receive an indemnity payment. You should select a two month interval during which rainfall is the most important to your operations, and select the value of production that you want to ensure. It's available for both pasture and hay acreage, and the deadline to sign up is November 15th. So for the grid where my office is located, uh, here's an example of how the rainfall index has evolved. Um, so far this year, we've just had one two-month period that dropped below the 90% threshold level. Last year, we had four different two-month periods that were below 90%, and the year before that, even more. So you can see that this may be a good way to uh, have additional insurance for your, your pasture or hay if you expect there to be low rainfall. The apiculture insurance program for beekeeping is also available throughout the entire state, and it's essentially identical to the pasture, rangeland, and forage insurance program. It doesn't cover production, it doesn't cover prices, it just covers the weather. The whole farm revenue protection program is a little bit different. It's designed for diversified farms with up to eight and a half million dollars in insured revenue, and they may have up to $17 million in total revenue. It's available for all counties throughout the whole country. 
and it covers loss of re revenue due to natural causes. You can choose a coverage level between 50 and 85%. The insurable revenue is based on historical financial records or evidence of expansion. And this points to the importance of keeping good records as a farmer so that you can see how, so that you can, so that you can document your revenue over the years, your yields, and be eligible for insurance payments. There are some additional important restrictions on the Whole Farm Revenue Protection Program. You may not have more than a million dollars in expected revenue from animals and animal products or from nursery and greenhouse products. Also, you may not have more than 50% of your revenue from commodities that you purchase for resale. Now I'm going to talk with you for a few minutes about an exciting new program called Dairy Revenue Protection. The Dairy RP program provides protection against declines in revenues due to either yields or prices. It does not cover the death of dairy cattle. It has a flexible price protection pr option. So producers can either choose to insure based on class pricing, class three and four milk prices, or component pricing, butter, fat, solids, and proteins insured uh, on the basis of the prices of those components. Producers may elect both types of coverage, but not for the same milk. So there's a final revenue guarantee which depends on both yields and prices. The estimated milk yields are based on USDA's National Agricultural Statistics Service estimates of milk yields over a multi-state region. And the prices used for this revenue guarantee are based on the futures prices of either your class pricing option or the component pricing option. Producers may purchase the coverage quarterly or must purchase the coverage quarterly. And they also elect, they can elect both coverage levels and protection factors for each three month period separately. The crop year is July 1st to June 30th and you have to cancel by June 30th. Catastrophic coverage is not available for the Dairy RP program. Coverage levels are between 70 and 95%. And as with other programs, the premium subsidy ranges with the more coverage you get, the lower your subsidy is. Farms can insure at different coverage levels and assign different protection factors, which are like a, a bonus, bonus to the coverage level in each quarter. You can use LGM Dairy Insurance and Dairy RP in the same crop year, but not in the same quarter. You can, however, participate in both Dairy RP and the Margin Protection Program at the exact same time. Protection under the Dairy RP Program can be purchased for up to five consecutive quarters. And qualifying beginning farmers and ranchers can receive an additional 10% of the premium subsidy. As with all crop insurance programs, you can purchase policies like this from a crop insurance agent. I'll wrap up just by saying again that good record keeping is essential for some policies because you need to demonstrate either a record of production or a record of revenue. For other policies, you need to demonstrate the basis for your claims. So you should keep good records of planting, replanting, inputs, production, harvesting, and the disposition of the insured crop. Subsidies are available for crop insurance, but they depend on the coverage level and also on implementing conservation practices. And there are many options to consider. It can be hard to get your head around. Once again, I'd like to summarize the options for Connecticut farmers. Diversified farms may look into whole farm revenue protection. If you're growing apples, you can use the actual production history policy, and you can also elect to choose the supplemental coverage option. For peaches and grapes, the actual production history policy is also available in certain counties. Nursery commodity insurance is available throughout the state, as is dairy and swines, uh, for dairy and swine, the livestock gross margin program, and the pasture, rangeland, and forage 
rainfall index insurance. For dairy, revenue protection is also available throughout the state. And for apiculture, beekeeping, the rainfall index insurance program is also available and it works identically to the pasture, rangeland, and forest, forage rainfall index insurance program. I conclude the slideshow with uh, some links which won't be accessible via the video, but you can email me if you'd like more references on crop insurance. Once again, I'm John Beauvais, an assistant professor and extension economist in the Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics at the University of Connecticut. Thank you for tuning in for this webinar on risk, risk management and crop insurance basics. Thanks again to Yukon Extension and Risk Management Agency at the USDA for making this possible.